Hey there, thanks for joining me. My name's Tibor. This is Imperium Galaxy Survival, and we are going to do some mining. I won't do too much of this on camera beyond what we do in this episode because it's dull. It is boring. But because of the extreme luck that we got in investigating that point of interest over there earlier, come back up here to the research outpost beta, we have a tier two mining drill so i'm holding a tier one mining drill at the moment that's the mining drill there and we have the drill to a tier two now we do have more fuel for the mining drill uh because we start off with about five and i think we picked up an extra one anyway but the tier two drill has we got one charge fortunately whilst we were rummaging and it's already got a full load in it as well so we can use that in a bit and we'll talk about how that works now i'm getting a bit low on food so i'm going to munch some corn dogs just bring my food levels back up a bit and we're going to start mining so i've walked short distance bikes over there so that's home uh and this is promethean deposit i'm just trying to walk and get as close as i can to it which is more or less about here and we're going to start mining. Now, what you don't want to do is you don't really want to mine straight down. Because you can basically end up digging yourself into a great big hole. Getting yourself back out is not too bad of a trouble because you've got the jetpack. But you can still make yourself a big enough hole that causes you a problem. Now, be warned. This can get a little bit noisy once we start drilling. But let's go for it. Just trying to uncover the Promethean down here somewhere. There it is. The bright blue of the Promethean. Now, just cheering up some of this as well because I want to show you something. So, uh, let's kind of slope this a little bit just to make sure I've got a way back out. good that gives me a little bit of a way out so mining with this drill this is the basic drill that we're using at the moment and when you mine it drops the material on the floor so we carry on mining a little bit more around here now it doesn't mine one thing is point: it doesn't mine straight in front of you it kind of mines at a bit of an angle so you, you're never really mining straight forward unless you're aiming slightly up Okay, so now we can see we've got Promethium. So if we just come back here, there we've got Promethium. It's a crushed stone. Uh, a load more Promethium. And we've now completed the quest. Let me just grab this Promethium as well. So we've now completed that first quest. And we have now completed the survival base camp. We're now to build base, base start. And we're not going to do that yet. We are going to do that in the next video, I should think. At least look at that in the next video. And there's a reason for that. The reason being that we've gone and investigated that point of interest. And there may be something else that we can do rather than just building ourselves a base. Okay, so I'm getting bored of using this drill because it's rubbish and it drops crap all over the place. Let me just pick up these bits and pieces, and we're now going to switch the tier 2 drill that we were lucky enough to pick up earlier. Let's just have one last look at the drill. Now, you're here a range of 2.5 meters and a reload time 3.1, and an ammo, ammo capacity range from 50. We've used about mm, almost half of that fuel just doing what we've done there. We've picked ourselves up 20 Prometheum ore and 28 crushed stone. That's fine, because we had to dig our way down from the surface, so you know we're going to get crushed stone and other rubbish. Let's look at the tier 2 drill. This is where things get kind of cool. Now, this has got a range of 7 metres. Now, if I don't forget, the range was 2.5 metres on the other one. That means that this range is a lot further away. 
This also automatically picks up your ores and has different functions. So if I come back to the tier one drill, if I right click, clicky, 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 nothing happens. If I come over here to my tier two drill, if I right click, I've got options. We can do removing stones. Actually, I think that's a fairly new feature. I don't think that was available on this tool before. So we've got uh, flattening, so we can flatten terrain. We can fill in holes. We can fill this hole in again after we finish digging it. We've got terrain removal, which obviously doesn't mine ores. And then we've got resource mining. I thought I heard something. <coughs> Clearly not. Right, so let's fire this thing up. There we go. We can already hear every time it goes bing, bing, that's it picking up an ore automatically. It'll also pick up crushed rock and everything else. Now, to give you an idea of how far ahead this is giving us a boost, I'm only level 5 at the moment, as I can be seen from the player inventory. If I go into my tech tree, Go to tools. Tier 2 drill is 11, level 7 tool. Now this does cause one small problem. I'm not going to be able to refuel it. So we need to make much use of this as we can. But let's grab some more fuel. What we'll probably do is drain this down to about halfway and then we'll save the rest of the fuel for getting things like iron and other useful materials I try not to wave it around too much like an idiot I mean it does kind of work like that but You've also got the range on here, and you don't need to move around very much for it to be able to mine out large sections. We're down to about 450 charge, I think, would be the stopping point. There we go, that'll do. You can see we've already cleared a massive hole. We've only taken 2% of the ores available from that deposit. So that gives us plenty of opportunity to come back for more and mine an awful lot more stuff. Now let's just land ourselves down here. Let me chuck the Prometheum ore away into there, as well as the crushed stone. If we go back and look at the components, we can turn the crushed stone into rock dust, the rock dust into cement, and we can actually, I believe, make concrete blocks out of the cement. Don't want to do that just yet, but we, that is what we can do. Now then, uh, let's talk devices. So. Obviously, I can't make a tier 2 drill. I can only make a tier 1 drill. And this is where I'd also have the ammo for the multi-charge and the drill charge. Now, we've not really talked about the multi-charge here. If we just go back into the tech tree and look at tools, the multi-charge is part of the multi-tool functionality. Now, we're not... I've not picked that one yet, but we probably could make use of it. But we did find one here which is we found it alongside the drill when we were investigating a point of interest now this multi-charge tool i uh, sorry this multi-tool uses multi-charge which is this thing here unfortunately we've got two of those and only one drill charge not a big deal but um it would have been nicer the other way around this can be used for removing repairing changing and rotating and upgrading of blocks this tool basically does a bit of everything so if we right click here we can see we can disassemble blocks so we can return the intact block for our own structure. Or we will get... Um, we may get a chance of getting intact blocks on public structures. Or we can deconstruct, which will try and return the components to us. We can upgrade. Now, if you've got the resources in your backpack, you can upgrade blocks and basically armour them. Change and rotate. Obviously, 
pretty obvious what you can do with that. You can rotate blocks around and move them. And you can repair blocks. This is what you need for repairing your planet, planet, your spaceship, or your base. And that is it. So we got kind of lucky, actually, with the multi-tool and the drill. We just now need to level up to a point where we can use them. So next episode, we are going to look at making a base. So we're getting towards the end of this episode now already. Silicon ore, which is conveniently nearby. Iron and more silicon over there. Silicon's useful because silicon, obviously, we can make glass. How close was that to the water? I didn't actually look. Ah, oh, it's right on the water, so we could take this with us. Now, a lot of these items, when you put them down, you can pick them up again. So let's just have a look in here. So this is now burnt off all its energy, and it's now at 1202 bottles in it. That's not too bad. Now, we use F normally to look into these things and see what their contents are. But if I press Shift and F, I can actually pick it up, and it's now back in my inventory ready to be used for whatever else I decide to use it for um, right so I'm thinking of a plan of what we're gonna do we need to come down here into this research outpost oh look at the size of that lake we need to come down here to this research outpost and I'm thinking that we should maybe take control of that now we've got the fuel that's not a big issue the issue we're going to have is with defending the base. So let's look at technology. Let's look at base technology. And uh, we are level 5, so we've got some different options. We have a player sentry gun. That uses the same bullets as my machine gun. Uh, what range has that got? Do, 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 magazine capacity of 250 has a range of 400 meters. That's not bad. However, I do particularly like these. This is a cannon turret. So let's click on that and unlock that. I still have so many uh, unlock points available. This cannon turret is going to be extremely important to us. And I think we should see if we can build one now. Let's come into here. And... Uh, where is it? We can't build it in this facility. Okay, so we can't build the turret in a survival constructor. We need to build it in the larger constructor. Now, there is a chance that when we build a base, we will get attacked by drones. But that's okay, because we've already proved that we can take them out. We could probably use a little bit more ammo, so I'm going to build some ammo, and in the next episode we'll go and look at taking control of that base down there, and we've got a base starter which we could possibly use. Hmm, I'm trying to think whether or not we should build a base or if we should take one over. I think maybe we should build a base because then at least we are. You know, we're going through the process here. We're going to have to do all this stuff anyway. And I think it's possibly worth then considering taking over that place as well. So maybe we'll relocate down there and take control of that facility at the same time. We'll have, we'll have two bases right next to each other. I think that's a good plan. So we'll do that in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye for now.